In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the basic page design workspace. Along the left side of the interface, we have the toolbar. To select a tool, you click on it in the toolbar, and you should see a change reflected in your mouse cursor. When you hover over a tool, you'll see a tooltip pop up that lets you know what the keyboard shortcut is for switching to that tool. For instance, the shortcut for the text tool is T. When I press the T key, eDesign switches to the text tool. When I press the Escape key, which is the shortcut for the selection tool, I'm switched back to the selection tool. You don't have to use these keyboard shortcuts, but they can be a great way to make you more efficient. The menus along the top allow you to access many commands and features. For instance, under the Edit menu, you can access commands such as Undo, Redo, Cut, Copy, and Paste. In the upper right corner, you have the Return to Book View button. Clicking this will close page design and take you back to the full ladder. The Next and Previous buttons allow you to go to the next spread or the previous spread in your yearbook, and the All Pages button allows you to access a mini ladder for navigating to other pages in your book. Along the right side is the Library panel. You can click on any of the icons to open that section of the Library panel images, portraits, templates, pop-ins, and artwork. If you want to close the library panel, click on the triangle here. Along the bottom of the interface is the control panel. The control panel contains options that change based on the tool you have selected and what you are trying to do inside of eDesign. For instance, when I switch to the text tool, I see text formatting options in the control panel. When I switch to a shape tool, I see options for controlling the shape's stroke color, stroke size, fill color, etc. The main area in page design is the design area. We'll look at the different aspects of the design area in the next tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll look at the different parts of the design area in page design. The design area has a left-hand page and a right-hand page, which are separated by the gutter. The gutter is where the two pages come together in the center of the book. Objects on the spread can cross the gutter if you have both pages open for editing. However, you should use caution when placing pictures across the gutter so that you don't place a person's face or some other key part of the picture in the gutter area. You should also not place text elements across the gutter since one or more letters may be unreadable when the book is printed and bound. Each page has margin guides that help you maintain consistent margins around the outside of the pages. eDesign does not prevent you from placing items outside the margins. The margin guides are just there to help you be consistent. To the outside of the margin guides is a dashed line that is an additional warning line. It's not recommended that you place text or graphics outside of this dashed line unless you are intending for them to bleed off the page. That brings us to the bleed line. The bleed line is the thick red line that surrounds the whole spread. When you want an object to bleed off the finished page of your book, you should extend it to the outside of this bleed line. If you place something into the bleed area but not all the way to the outside of the line, eDesign will warn you and remind you that an element that is intended to bleed off the page should extend all the way to the outside of the bleed line. Beyond the bleed line is what is called the pasteboard. This area is outside of the page and anything that's placed in this area will not be printed in the book. However, the pasteboard can be a good area for storing elements that you think you may add to your page later. Just be aware that anything outside of the bleed area will not be printed on the page. The last item we'll look at is the folio. The folio, by default, is located along the bottom of each page. The folio contains the automatic page number and any other elements that your advisor or editor have decided should appear at the bottom of every page. The folio elements are not editable in the regular page area, so you'll see this caution symbol if you try to select folio elements. Now you've been introduced to the design area in eDesign. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at columns, grids, and guides, which can make laying out your pages much more efficient. We'll start with column guides. Columns can be used to visually organize the content of your layout, 
and many schools who are designing pages from scratch use columns to help structure their pages. The Herf Jones Yearbook Journalism curriculum has some excellent information about column design if you're interested in learning more. The pages in eDesign are by default set to four columns, but you can change that to more or fewer if you wish. Here in Page Design, we'll go up to the Layout menu and choose Page Columns. Under Number, we can set the number to a higher or lower number. For instance, I'll choose 8 and click OK. And now each page is divided into eight columns. I'll go back to Layout and choose Page Columns again. And if we look down here in the Column Spacing field, we'll see it's set by default to 1 pica. And that refers to the amount of space between each column. You could set that to more or less if you wish. I'm going to set the number of columns to 1 this time. And this is what you do if you don't want to work with column guides and you want to have them out of your way. If you type in 1 and click OK, now you will essentially have no columns or one column, which is just the margins of the page. Your advisor or editor can also change the column settings in Book Setup. If they go to Book Setup and Preferences, they can change the number of columns per page for the whole book at one time. Now let's look at the document grid. The document grid is a graph paper-like background that can be very helpful to you in aligning elements on your pages and in keeping consistent spacing between elements. We'll go up to the View menu, come down and choose Show Grid to reveal this grid background. I'm going to zoom in on a part of the page so we can see the grid a little more clearly. They are arranged in one pica squares. And I'm going to paste down some elements that I created previously so we'll have some elements here to work with. And what the document grid does is it allows you to easily align and arrange objects on the page. So if I wanted these elements to be aligned uh, along the right-hand edges, it's very easy for me to do that here. And it's also very easy for me to maintain this internal spacing of one pica so that everything on my page is fairly consistent. Uh, the document grid has snapping behavior, which means that when I come to one of these lines, eDesign wants to snap that object to that position, so it makes it easier for me to align those objects on the page. And this snapping behavior is in place whether you have the document grid turned on or not. So even if it's invisible, eDesign is still trying to help you by snapping these elements to the document grid. This is also in preferences, so your advisor or editor could set it so that the document grid is turned on or turned off for every page by default. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the document grid here, and let's talk about another feature called guides or ruler guides. Uh, eDesign has a horizontal ruler along the top and a vertical ruler along the left-hand side. If you click in that ruler area, so I'm going to click here in this horizontal ruler and drag down, I can create a custom guide, and it shows up as this cyan line across the page. And that could be useful to me if I wanted to align elements at a particular part or point on the page. Just like that. Now the ruler guides are temporary in that they will be there during this particular editing session, but the next time I come back to this page, the ruler guides will be removed. So they're more for temporary alignment of elements. The same thing holds true for the vertical ruler. I can click and drag over here to create a a vertical guide and I could use that guide to position elements on the page or if there was an exact intersection point that I was trying to go for so that all these elements perfectly intersected at the same point I could have a vertical ruler and a horizontal ruler on my page at the same time. And so that's the basics of columns, grids, and guides uh, in eDesign. Again, all of these things are set in preferences by your editor or your advisor. So if you want it set the same way for every page, they can make that change in preferences. Or you can change it on a page or spread by spread basis by going up to the view menu to control things like the snapping behavior, clearing guides, hiding column guides, snapping to column guides, showing or hiding the grid. Anything that you change here in the view menu will just change for the spread that you're working on. But things that the advisor or editor changes in preferences and book setup would apply to every page in your book. When working on pages in eDesign, you'll want to be able to zoom in on elements to see them up close while you're working on them, and then be able to zoom back out to see the results of your work on the whole page or spread. 
This tutorial will look at the various ways you can do this. One way you can zoom in on a layout is to use the Zoom tool shown here. Click to select it in the tool panel or press the shortcut key which is Z. With the Zoom tool you can click on an area of the page to zoom in on it. Clicking additional times will zoom in closer. If you wish to zoom out you can add the Shift key and click. Notice that the plus sign in the Zoom tool changes to a minus sign when you hold down the Shift key and then clicking zooms you back out. Another way to use the Zoom tool is to click and drag around a portion of the page that you want to view. When you release the mouse button, the area that you selected will zoom to fit in the window. Whenever you are zoomed in on a page and you want to see the layout as a whole, use the Fit to Window command. You can go to the View menu and choose Fit to Window, or you can click the Fit to Window button shown here in the tool panel. We will now look at what is probably the most efficient way to zoom in and out in eDesign. When working in eDesign, the two tools you'll be using most often are the Selection tool and the Text tool. This zoom method allows you to zoom in and out while keeping the Selection tool or the Text tool active. For instance, I have the Selection tool and I'll click to select this headline that I want to look at more closely. With the headline selected, I can press the Control key and the Plus key on Windows, or Command and Plus on Mac, and I'll start zooming in on that object. Pressing Control minus, or Command minus on a Mac, will zoom back out. To fit the spread in the window again, I'll click the Fit to Window button. An alternate to this would be to select the object and use the Zoom menu in the toolbar to choose a higher zoom ratio. In this case, I'll choose 150% to zoom right in on the object that I have selected. I can then choose Fit to Window to zoom back out. The same technique works when editing text. I have the text tool selected, and I have my cursor in this text frame. If I come to the Zoom menu and choose, say, 200%, I zoom right in on the text frame that I'm trying to edit. When you are zoomed in on a page, you have a couple of ways that you can navigate around. You can use the scroll bar at the bottom to move left or right, and the scroll bar at the right to move up and down. Or you can use the hand tool in the tool panel. When the hand tool is active, you can click and drag to pan around on the page. I'll click the Fit to Window button one last time to zoom back out to see the whole spread. And that's the basics of zooming and navigating inside of page design.